As we gaze out into the cosmos, we are immediately struck by the incredible vastness of the universe. The stars we see shining in the night sky are but a mere fraction of the hundreds of billions of stars present in our own Milky Way galaxy. And yet, the Milky Way is only one of the many billions of galaxies that exist within the observable universe, which stretches out for an incredible 46 billion light years in all directions. The origins of this vast and complex universe can be traced back to a singular moment, some 13.8 billion years ago. It was then that the universe began as a hot, dense, rapidly expanding state, known as the Big Bang. This moment marked the beginning of the universe as we know it today, a universe full of matter, radiation, and the laws of physics that govern its evolution. But it's all still expanding, forming new stars, and evolving. Then how and when will all these things come to an end? The journey to understanding the fate of the universe starts with Albert Einstein. Einstein believed that the force of gravity would counter the widely held idea of a static universe, which was widely accepted in his time. He believed that the gravitational force would cause things to contract. However, this was not happening. He concluded that 3 must be some kind of repulsive force that will counter gravity, which he dubbed the cosmological constant. But in 1929, Edwin Hubble discovered that a galaxy's redshift was proportional to its distance, implying that space and time were expanding. This newfound understanding meant that Einstein had to abandon his work on the cosmological constant, at least temporarily. Now that we know the universe is expanding, we begin to gain a little insight into how the universe might end. In the early 1990s, one thing was fairly certain about the expansion of the universe. It might have enough energy density to stop its expansion and re-collapse, or it might have so little energy density that it would never stop expanding. But gravity was certain to slow the expansion as time went on. But the slowing down of the universe was not observed, theoretically, the universe had to slow down. Then in 1998, the Hubble Space Telescope observed a very distant supernova, showing that a long time ago, the universe was actually expanding more slowly than it is today. So the expansion of the universe has not been slowing due to gravity, as everyone thought, it has been accelerating. No one expected this, no one knew how to explain it. But something was causing it. Eventually, theorists had to put forward three explanations for the mysterious acceleration of the universe's expansion. One is a modified version of Einstein's theory of gravity that includes the cosmological constant. Another is the existence of an unknown type of energy fluid filling the universe. The third explanation is that there is something fundamentally wrong with Einstein's theory of gravity. Theorists still don't know what the correct explanation is, but they have given the solution a name. It is called dark energy. More is unknown than is known about it. We know how much dark energy there is because we know how it affects the universe's expansion. Other than that, it is a complete mystery. But it is an important mystery. It turns out that roughly 68% of the universe is dark energy. And then dark matter makes up about 27%. The rest of everything ever observed with all of our instruments, all normal matter, adds up to less than 5% of the universe. With this expansion occurring, the galaxies are moving increasingly farther away from each other. As time continues on for billions of years, things will begin to cool down. By this, I mean stars burn out and the ingredients needed to form new stars disperse, to the point where star formation ceases. All the lights fade and the night sky goes dark. This scenario is referred to as heat death. At its core, the idea of heat death is rooted in the second law of thermodynamics, which states that the total entropy, or disorder, in a closed system tends to increase over time. This means that, in an isolated system, any energy that is transferred from one part of the system to another will eventually become evenly distributed throughout the system, resulting in a state of maximum entropy. In other words, everything in the system will become uniformly disordered, and there will be no more energy available to do work. When we apply this concept to the entire universe, the implications are staggering. As the universe continues to expand, its energy will become more and more spread out, resulting in a gradual cooling down of everything within it. 
Eventually, all of the stars in the universe will run out of fuel and stop burning, leaving only cold, dead remnants in their wake. At this point, the universe will have reached a state of maximum entropy, with all of its energy evenly distributed and no more work able to be done. William Thompson, also known as Lord Kelvin, was a physicist and mathematician who made significant contributions to the field of thermodynamics. In 1851, he put forth a view that challenged the commonly held belief that heat was a substance. Based on recent experiments on the dynamical theory of heat, Thomson suggested that heat is not a substance, but a dynamical form of mechanical effect. He argued that there must be an equivalence between mechanical work and heat, as they are cause and effect. A year later, in 1852, Thomson published his paper titled, On a Universal Tendency in Nature to the Dissipation of Mechanical Energy, which laid the groundwork for the second law of thermodynamics. The paper proposed that mechanical motion and the energy used to create it will naturally tend to dissipate or run down. This concept attracted the attention of other physicists, including William Rankine and Hermann von Helmholtz, with whom Thomson exchanged ideas on the subject. Ten years later, in 1862, Thomson published another article titled, On the Age of the Sun's Heat. In this work, he reiterated his fundamental beliefs in the indestructibility of energy and the universal dissipation of energy. Thomson believed that energy could not be created or destroyed, only converted from one form to another. He argued that the consequences of the second law would lead to the diffusion of heat, cessation of motion, and exhaustion of potential energy through the material universe. Thomson believed that this process would ultimately lead to the heat death of the universe, a state of maximum entropy where all energy is evenly distributed and no more work can be done. If the universe were finite and followed the existing laws, it would eventually lead to a state of universal rest and death. However, it is impossible to imagine a boundary or limit to the extent of matter in the universe. Therefore, instead of a single finite mechanism that would eventually run down and come to a stop, science seems to point towards an endless progression of action that involves the transformation of potential energy into palpable motion, and then into heat, throughout endless space. In other words, the universe may be characterized by an endless cycle of transformation and change, rather than a static and limited existence. As the universe expands, there is more and more energy in empty space until, quite literally, the fabric of space-time itself tears. This is known as the Big Rip. The Hubble constant, which characterizes the rate of expansion of the universe, is currently not accelerating fast enough to disintegrate local structures such as galaxies, which are held together by gravitational forces. However, it is still large enough to continue increasing the space between these structures. If the rate of acceleration were to steadily increase to infinity, then eventually all material objects in the universe, including galaxies and even the smallest forms of matter, would disintegrate into unbound elementary particles and radiation. This process would continue until the energy density, scale factor, and expansion rate become infinite, effectively culminating in a singularity that signals the end of the universe. This process is known as the Big Rip, and its devastating effects on the universe have been a subject of intense scientific study and debate. The theory suggests that the universe will continue to expand at an increasing rate, ultimately leading to a situation where the gravitational forces that hold structures like galaxies together become too weak to counteract the expansion. As a result, the objects in the universe will begin to stretch out and eventually disintegrate into their constituent particles. If this acceleration continues to increase indefinitely, as some theories suggest, then eventually the gravitational forces that hold galaxies, stars, and even atoms together would be overcome by the expanding dark energy. This would cause everything in the universe to be torn apart, including the very fabric of space-time itself. The consequences of the Big Rip would be catastrophic. As the universe expands, galaxies would be torn apart, stars would be ripped apart, and planets would be destroyed. Even individual atoms would be torn apart, as the expanding dark energy overcomes the strong nuclear force that holds them together. Until around 5 billion years ago, the universe's growth was slow due to its strong gravitational pull. More recently, this expansion increased, with many attributing it to the effects of dark energy. For a big rip to occur, dark energy must win in its battle with gravity to such a point that it can rip apart individual atoms. Ultimately, the Big Rip would result in the complete and total destruction of all matter and energy in the universe. 
there would be nothing left but an empty void, devoid of all structure and meaning. Still, there is yet another prediction, one that is quite the opposite of the Big Rip. Just as the Big Bang started as a cosmological expansion, this theory assumes that the average density of the universe will be enough to stop its expansion and the universe will begin contracting, where the current expansion will slow down and ultimately come to a halt, causing the universe to contract and eventually collapse in on itself. This theory was first proposed by Russian physicist Alexander Friedman in 1922, who created a set of equations to show that the universe's density would determine whether it would expand or contract. The big crunch would occur if the gravitational force of matter in the universe is strong enough to overcome the explosive force of the Big Bang. In this scenario, the universe's expansion would gradually slow down, eventually coming to a halt, and then begin to collapse in on itself. As the universe contracts, the space between galaxies will shrink, and they will begin to merge, eventually forming a single massive black hole that would consume everything. In the final moments of the Big Crunch, the universe would become one large fireball, filled with radiation from stars and high-energy particles. The intense heat and pressure created by this collapse would cause the universe to reach a temperature of infinity, and at the absolute end, neither time nor space would remain. What the theory is effectively suggesting is that another Big Bang could occur leading to an infinite cycle of extreme expansion, and contraction called the Big Bounce. So, there is some hope that the universe might not be completely doomed. Another frightening possibility about the end of the universe is known as vacuum decay. To understand what vacuum decay is and how it could potentially bring about the end of the universe, we first need to delve into the concept of the Higgs field. The Higgs field is an energy field that permeates the entire universe and is responsible for giving particles their mass. When a particle interacts with the Higgs field, it gains mass but loses its ability to travel at the speed of light. According to the theory of vacuum decay, the Higgs field is currently in a state of stable potential energy. However, it is not in the most stable state possible. Instead, the Higgs field could be in a minimum potential energy state or valley, but not the overall lowest one. The lower the potential energy, the more stable and favorable the state is. So why doesn't the Higgs field simply shift into the lower energy state? There are two possible ways this could happen. The first is through an event with enough energy to propel the field over the hill and into the lower valley. The second is through quantum tunneling, which occurs when a Higgs boson particle spontaneously shifts from one dip to the other, creating a little bubble of the more favorable energy state. If a vacuum bubble of the more favorable energy state is created, it will continue to expand and grow, annihilating everything in its path. As the bubble expands, it will rewrite the rules of the universe, physics, and even chemistry. Interactions between fields and particles will be unrecognizable. The vacuum bubble will continue to expand until it reaches the speed of light, at which point everything in the universe will be destroyed. The scary thing about vacuum decay is that it could happen at any moment, without warning. We could simply cease to exist in an instant. However, the good news is that vacuum decay is currently just a theory, and there is no concrete evidence to suggest that it will happen. Still, the possibility is there, and it serves as a reminder that everything we know and hold dear could one day be destroyed in an instant. Each possibility described so far is based on a very simple form for the dark energy equation of state. However, as the name is meant to imply, very little is currently known about the physics of dark energy. If the theory of inflation is true, the universe went through an episode dominated by a different form of dark energy in the first moments of the Big Bang, but inflation ended, indicating an equation of state far more complex than those assumed so far for present-day dark energy. It is possible that the dark energy equation of state could change again, resulting in an event that would have consequences that are extremely difficult to predict or parameterize. As the nature of dark energy and dark matter remain enigmatic, even hypothetical, the possibilities surrounding their coming role in the universe are currently unknown. It might be easier to explain the beginning of the universe and the Big Bang theory, than to talk about how it will end. It is possible that the universe will last forever, or it may be crushed out of existence in a reverse of the Big Bang scenario, but that would be so far in the future that it might as well be infinite. 
Until recently, cosmologists assumed that the rate of the universe's expansion was slowing because of the effects of gravity. However, current research indicates that the universe may expand to eternity. The second law of thermodynamics reinforces that the state of the universe will flow toward entropy. Yes, these fates are all still speculated, but as we advance scientifically and uncover more knowledge about the universe we live in, these possibilities we conceive of become more and more precise. Although they bring us closer to an answer to our questions on the mind-boggling nature of the universe, I believe the fact that we do not know exactly how it will end is a testament to its beauty and complexity. With its infinite vastness and age, the universe holds so many secrets that continually challenge our studies and push the frontier of science to seemingly impossible limits. How can the entire universe just emerge from nothing? And what exactly do you mean by nothing? I have already made a video on that, click the video on your screen to watch it. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos.